on biologists to part three of specification point C, where we're going to be looking at selective reabsorption. We had a look in part one at the structure of the kidney. In part two, we had a look at ultrafiltration, and we're now on to selective reabsorption. So ultrafiltration, this occurred across the glomerulus into the Bowman's capsule, where if you remember, we had the glomerular filtrate being extracted from the blood. And in that glomerular filtrate, we had water, we had salts such as potassium and sodium. We also had urea, um, glucose and amino acids being removed from the blood. Now, we want glucose and amino acids back into my blood because they're useful things for the body to be using. So therefore, we selectively reabsorb some of those useful products. And this occurs within the proximal convoluted tubule. So as mentioned, we, we want back all the glucose, all the amino acids, and this occurs by facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion means that we need a protein to do this, and it goes along the diffusion gradient or the concentration gradient. So this is the process by which uh, selective reabsorption occurs in the proximal convoluted tubule. It does look complicated, but it is quite easy when you break it down. So on the left-hand side here, you can see that I've got the capillaries. This is the blood flow. And on this side, um, these are the, the, the good blood supply that line and surround my nephrons. On the right hand side here, I've got the lumen, so inside of the proximal convoluted tubule. And these funny looking cells here, these are, these are the cuboidal cells that line the proximal convoluted tubule wall. So these make up the wall of the proximal convoluted tubule. Now, in order to get glucose and amino acids back into the bloodstream to be taken to other parts of the body, there's a number of processes that are occur. So the first thing that's going to occur is that sodium ions are actively transported out of the proximal convoluted tubule wall, the cells that line that wall, into the bloodstream. Now it's active transport, so it requires ATP. So that means there'll be a lot of mitochondria within these cells to provide that ATP through aerobic respiration. Now, because sodium has been moved into the blood cells, into their blood, sorry, this means that water will also follow by osmosis because as sodium moves or as an iron or any product really moves from one place to another, it will lower the water potential to wherever it's going. So water will also follow, which is this blue arrow here, by osmosis into the bloodstream. So because sodium has been actively transported out into the blood, it's going to be replaced and it's going to be replaced by the sodium being removed from the proximal convoluted tubule that that glomerular filtrate within that uh, proximal convoluted tubule it's going to move from there into the cells that align the proximal convoluted tubule wall by a process called facilitated diffusion now it's going to do this with glucose or an amino acid and this is called co-transport so co-transport is where sodium is going to move in to that proximal convoluted tubule wall with something else either glucose or an amino acid so it's facilitated diffusion because it uses a protein to do so but it's also co-transport because we have sodium moving in and glucose or an amino acid at the same time now as mentioned before wherever i've got sodium moving or glucose or an amino acid from one place to another it's going to lower the water potential to wherever it's going so water will also be uh, moving by osmosis down the water potential gradient so not only is sodium moving into the blood water's moving into the blood and um, also glucose and amino acids are as well so once glucose and amino acids have been moved into the cells that line the proximal convoluted tubule wall by facilitated diffusion using co-transport my glucose or an amino acid is then going to move into the bloodstream again by facilitated diffusion. Glucose and amino acids are too big to diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer, so they're going to have to use a protein to get into the blood. And that is selective reabsorption in the proximal convoluted tubule. There's a bit more detail here if you want to pause and read that um, in terms of what is happening and how it's happening. So the key things here is selective reabsorption if we've got glucose, all glucose, all amino acids and some water is being selectively reabsorbed back into the bloodstream here in the proximal convoluted tubule. Guys, good luck with your exams. All the best and use good scientific terminology to help describe and explain your ideas in as much detail as you possibly can. Good luck.